Welcome to Encrypted Inc. Uh, I am Daniel Alvaro. I am the creator of this YouTube channel. I will just go through just a few things about myself, why I created the channel, what content I'm going to, uh, I'm going to include in the channel, and as well as a little bit of a market analysis of what has happened in the crypto market in, in say, the last month and a half or so like that. Uh, my name's Daniel, like I said. Uh, what I do for a living, I'm a full-time crypto ASX trader as well as real estate investor. Uh, a bit of a background on myself prior to this, I was in real estate for eight years selling real estate in Perth. I am from Perth, Western Australia. Uh, the reason why I created this particular channel is basically to provide uh, investment tips stock and ASX, as well as uh, news and market analysis um, for crypto, property, and also uh, the ASX, and to some degree international shares um, for the Australian community. So I, uh, this is for Australians, basically. I am Australian, and I want to provide that to Australians for Australians. Um, what motivated me to do this? I guess my motivation came from speaking to people, in particularly about crypto itself. I think there's a lot of people out there that enter the crypto market that may have no idea what it's about or what to invest in or or basically just invest blindly. And I think a couple of horror stories that I've just recently heard was was basically my inspiration to start this, to maybe just educate and form people from beginners to intermediate sort of to even people that know more than me um, about, uh, you know, about crypto. So um, basically one of the horror stories that I did hear was a friend of mine, uh, his dad was considering entering the crypto market. He obviously didn't know where to start or what to research. He, he may not understand them, you know, what is a crypto, what each individual crypto does, what its function is. Um, and and basically, I think he got to a point where he, he was unsure. He didn't know who to trust. So he, he spoke to a financial advisor. Um, and this particular advisor, from what my friend told me, he charged his father an exuberant amount of money for advice. And I'm talking into the thousands. And that's just particularly for advice. And I don't know, that that somewhat rubbed me up the wrong way. Um, I think, you know, f f to me, that's someone taking advantage of someone. If, if you're going to charge that sort of money on advice when, you know, a lot of this information is already out there, um, I think, you know, maybe this is what I'm doing for people will actually help them to avoid, you know, those sort of traps. The, the second thing was also um, a close friend of mine who has um, invested in a particular currency. He was told it was the next best thing since sliced bread. I, I was curious and I asked him, you know, you know, what did you invest in? When he told me what he invested in, um, it, it, I, it, I didn't say to him, but it, it sort of, you know, sent off alarm bells within myself saying, you know, you know, there's people out there that will say, you know, this is the best thing, you should invest in this. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that may not always be true, okay? And um, my number one tip for today that I'm going to stress is research is key. Do your own research. Do not take someone else's advice on buying something because they think it's the next best thing, okay? And I'll give you some strategies and tips that I use in investing in regards to that throughout this channel, um, the life of this channel. So uh, I'll, I'll help you along the way as to why I, what I invest in, or not particularly what I invest in, but why I would invest in something and just something to keep in mind as, you know, you, you continue your investment journey if that's what you want to do. So. I guess that's a little bit of a brief overview as to what this channel is about, why I created it. Um, we'll just start today on cryptos itself. Um, I'm just going to go through a little bit of a run through of what's happened in the crypto market. I would say since let's uh, since May, around the May time, and um, so people that are new to crypto, you can just see here on my chart, basically. 
Um, there has been a, a massive bull run, as you've seen. This just just shows you. It's gone up here. It's peaked up here. So Ethereum, which is a cryptocurrency, peaked at fifty six thousand thirty two Australian dollars. And then obviously here we saw a major correction or crash, depending on what you want to call it. It dropped to as low as uh, two thousand and two hundred twenty five. Then it peaked back up to about 3,700 roughly. And then basically what we saw and what a lot of people who have been in crypto for a while is, is what I would call it's pretty much a sideways channel, um, which is between these two lights. So from the lows and highs, it's basically stuck within this particular range up until this point here, which is uh, uh, the 21st of July. Now, I, people that are new to crypto may not understand this, and it's funny because I've been on a Facebook group and people, I, I saw a funny post with someone saying, oh, what's happened to the gold price, okay? And uh, like the gold prices go, people thought, oh, you know, this is this is inflationary time. America's printing a lot of money. They're sending, you know, basically, you know, saying, giving us money to say, all right, well, you know, we'll support you and to support Australia as well. Um, so basically what has happened here and what effect has it had, particularly on, well, on the gold price? Um, so what I'm going to tell you here is oh, since this particular crash here, this is a period of time when cryptocurrency wasn't really recognized by institutions. It was just left alone. It was basically a retail market, okay? So it was just, you know, mums, dads, everyone, they just bought crypto, they saw crypto rise, it's fine. In this period of time, this is where we've seen institutions uh, enter the market. And when I say institutions, I'm talking about large American uh, banks, investment firms, hedge funds in America, basically getting into the crypto market. Um, so this particular period of time, as you can see, is a very sideways channel and it dipped down here. This was particularly a massive massive accumulation period for these international institutions, okay? They saw a dip in the market. They thought this is a great entry point, and yes, it is, 100%. A lot of retail investors most likely, and I don't know, during this time would have sold maybe what they had in Ethereum or in any cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency, and that's that's their accumulation period. And this... this in technically is an accumulation period. So I'll go through, you know, strategies during an accumulation period and, you know, basically trying to buy the low end of accumulation. But any general time in here would have been a great time to buy. Any institutions in America knew this. And this is what they've invested in. Okay. Specifically, this is Ethereum. Now, I'll get to the more basics about this and explain as well in my channel about everything that you need to know, I guess, as a beginner entering the crypto market. And this is going to go from the very start. What is a blockchain? What is a uh, centralized exchange? What is a decentralized exchange? What is DeFi? What is an NFT? How do NFTs work? What's the real world examples of how NFTs are being used today? And I'll even talk about just myself and what I think the future of NFTs are. And I'll get a bit on that later. But this is purely just an introduction um, and a little bit about what's happened in the crypto market um, and maybe a few tips along the way. So your first tip is do your research. Number one, if you're ever entering investing, do your own research. And along the way, what do you, when I say that, what do you look at? I'll get to that later. So please um, subscribe, like to the channel. Um, basically, share this with your friends. Anyone that's inter interested in cryptos or ASX or real estate, please share this. This advice is completely free. I'm not any way connected to any... Uh, crypto, uh, you know, um, founder or, or ASX shareholder, you know, significant shareholder. I just purely doing this as advice um, for people who are looking um, to get into the market and possibly do what I do, which is full-time crypto ASX trading um, and, you know, give you the tools and and um, understanding of, you know, how I do it. And, and, and if you get anything out of it, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. Okay, so what's happened here? We'll go to that particular accumulation period or sideways channel, but then there has been a, a massive increase here in uh, Ethereum's price. 
Okay, at this point here, there was talk, and people in crypto know that uh, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, was doing changes to the blockchain, and they, he, he called it the London hard fork. This here, and this typically happens in crypto, this is people buying the rumor, okay? So they said, okay, we're going to get in before this change occurs. And I'll explain what the London hard fork is and what that does to people who have been in the crypto market for a while, just so you know what effect this has had to Ethereum's price and to Ethereum and, and the Ethereum smart chain network. So this is buying the rumor. They've bought the rumor here. The London hard fork took place here. And if I can zoom in a little bit, I'll just change my chart so I can see a little bit more here. Right. So there was the London hard fork. Okay, so basically it was, you know, a very buy-in time. There's been sell-offs along the way. Um, so, yeah, basically we gained more support through here, went up here. And other people, you know, people selling out as well. There was maybe an accumulation stage here. Now, this is an accumulation stage prior to the London hard fork, a sideways channel. This typically I like as an investor. Why? It shows... A sense, a sense of maybe something's going to happen. To put it really simply, it's it's uh, it's it could go either way. It's uncertainty. It's it's in a waiting period. It's waiting for something to happen. To put it very very simply, the London hard fought took place here exactly just after this accumulation stage. And what do we see? Quite a nice you know increase in price over that period of time until now here. Okay, what is a fork? What is a what is you know, to people that, again, are new, this can be some education to yourself. Okay, what is a fork? Basically, it is a change to the blockchain, okay? Putting it very, very simply. Forks can be used for different reasons. Um, one particular important reason, you know, a fork might take place is for improvements, to make improvements, add features to a blockchain, okay? Um, in the London hard fork, in my opinion, I believe that is the reason why that actual fork took place, and I'll explain why. Forks can also be used for other things. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, okay, basically it can be used when there's difficulty in um, gaining consensus within a blockchain. So if, if basically, and I'll get to this as well as my beginner's course as to what is a blockchain and how it works, uh, but basically you may have heard of, you know, blo a blockchain as people solving puzzles. Um, well, that's true. It's basically a, a whole bunch of information or data or a transaction going into a, a, a central location, but... There needs to be worked out within that group of people or within the people within that particular uh, or part of that network to work out how where this information or transaction should go. And I guess that's the job of a miner. If that's new to you, that's what mining is. Basically, they're solving, you know, a problem, puzzle solving, putting together, you know, where what part of a transaction should go where to complete a transaction. Once that puzzle is then solved, it needs to come to some form of consensus, which means it's basically a group of, let's just say people, just to make it easy for beginners, saying it's a consensus group. Yeah, we all agree that this is correct. Almost like an accountant. You, you, do, you send in all your information and they go, yep, what you've said or is actually true. Okay, and then once you come to that consensus, then basically that information or transaction can then be sent to who it needs to be sent to. So the London hard fork is in particularly or is particularly important for two reasons because it's uh, and put it base to put it basically it, it served a purpose in two maybe three factors. One, Ethereum's network 
has had an issue in the past in regards to gas fees. Now, what is a gas fee? If you're a part of a decentralised network, which means you have a wallet that's not connected to an exchange itself, and you wanted to send your cryptocurrency to someone else, or you want to trade it, you want to trade that particular currency for someone else's currency, in doing that trade, you will have to pay what is called a gas fee. Okay. Now, in the past, when Ethereum's network is congested or there's a lot of activity, there is a significant increase in gas fees. And for someone who is trading a currency on a decentralized exchange, this is not good. A, for them, because they have no certainty as to if they want to make a trade, how much it's going to cost them. And B, it's not good for Ethereum in the sense that, you know, uh, I did a trade this week. It, it cost me, I don't know, um, you know, a certain amount of money. Let's put it in a dollar form, say like five Australian dollars. Yeah, I did one yesterday. And, you know, it, it then similarly cost for a similar trade costed me. 100 Australian dollars, just to give an example. These are just numbers I'm pulling out to it. So that that was an issue, and and that was the reason why the London hard fork took place. It was a fork in the sense that it made an improvement to the blockchain. The improvement, by putting it simply, is basically to stabilise gas fees, okay, to try and stop this massive influx and, and decrease in a gas fee, to try and make that more stable. Okay, so that that was the purpose of the London Hard. The second purpose of the London Hard Fork, and this is a term a term used in cryptocurrency, is called burning. Basically, it it is what it says it is. It's burning. It's it's typically saying instead of giving you know a particular cryptocurrency to miners who are working to you know help solve transactions for that particular blockchain in case in the case of Ethereum, instead of like sending them a certain amount of money, we are going to now burn a certain amount. So it's basically taking away the supply of Ethereum from the market. Now, if anyone knows basic economics, supply and demand, if you decrease supply, you generally will see with that an increase in price, um, given that demand is the same or even you know more. It's just like anything. You decrease the supply of something, more people generally will want it if it's something that they are interested in. And hence, this particular period after the London hard fork, as they started burning Ethereum and decreasing the supply of that particular cryptocurrency, there has been a price increase in that currency. Supply and demand basically just working as as you can see. So there you go. That's that's a little bit about Ethereum. I just want to talk also very quickly just for people who are interested um, about um, Ethereum or um, just cryptos in general. This may not be, for, this is for beginners, intermediates and advanced. Just, just some knowledge or, or something that I have noticed that is quite interesting. Um, to other people, this may not make any sense, but to some, it will. Okay. What I have here, and I should probably change that to Australian dollars. Uh, and we'll set this up the same one month. And I didn't, when I did this before, I actually had it in US dollars. So I hope this is still the case, but I'll just go through it first. Um, oops, no, I don't want you there. Go away. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, just putting this together. I want my ruler. I don't want you. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this is not a ruler. No. Can I move this? 
No, why can't I move this? All right, sorry guys. Look, um, as I said, this is my very first stream. Uh, I can't get to the ruler because the software that I'm using um, to record this gets in the way. Maybe I could change that. Is there any way I've changed it? Can I move it? Won't they even let me move it? I'll get back to this uh, in particular uh, later. Um, it's just basically the relationship between Uniswap and Ethereum. For those people who are experienced with crypto, you would obviously know that. Um, so Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. It's a way of basically um, trading your cryptocurrency um, without using a centralized exchange. Uh, for Ethereum, um, there's also a Binance Smart Chain, which, you know, they use Pancake Swap. That's fine. So I'll get to that and explain what those are for beginners um, later on as well in uh, my next video. So as you can see, basically what I was going to say here is there is a relationship between Ethereum and Uniswap. It's quite clear and it's a very clear relationship. You look at this very low point here and let's just go to another particular point in time, which is there, accumulation page is there. Very, very, it basically runs in tandem, as you can see, almost to a T, or, or it is to a T. Increase there, peak there, <coughs> resistance there, accumulated period there, uh, potentially a sell-off from this uh, price rise here, slight spike in price, accumulation period, then people went back into the market, and you can see there, so it follows it to a particular T. Now, I'll, I'll, I will explain this without actually showing it to you, um, but what I've actually found out is Uniswap, and we'll just check the price on that in the moment, it is trading at currently 29 Australian dollars, I believe that's Australian dollars. Uh, no, sorry, 40, 40, Australia, 40 Australian dollars. Um, and as you can see, Ethereum's at uh, 4,328. So you would say, I guess in a stock term, well, Uniswap is a, is a cheaper, so it may be a mid-tier crypto, whereas Ethereum would probably be in the high, would, well, it would be, it would be a higher tier um, crypto. Given the fact that the relationship is the same, I thought, well, what is the dis difference between the low, the very bottom of this cycle here and the very high in price as a percentage gain? And interesting enough, even though as this particular crypto follows the exact same pattern of each other, because essentially they are connected to each other, um, in the in the sense that Uniswap is used to trade or you know to, to to make trades on the Ethereum network or smart chain, is there a difference from the the low to the top in your percentage increase over time? And what I've found is yes, that is true. So what does that tell you? Yes, Ethereum is great, it is good, but if you invested in Uniswap, given the fact that it follows the same pattern as Ethereum, you would actually be better off, or you would see more of a gain investing in Uniswap than you would Ethereum. Not, it, it isn't significant, but like a, a, a huge amount, but it is a difference. And unfortunately, I don't have my rule to show you, but um, as a percentage-wise, I think over that period it was about a 100% gain, maybe 110% gain um, in Uniswap's price. This is just going off the top of my head. Um, and Ethereum experienced an 80% gain. Interesting. Take what you want from that. It's just something, some market analysis that I particularly picked up on um, comparing two uh, particular cryptos. Um, so, uh, yeah, take it, do what you want with it, do nothing with it, it's up to you. All right, that's just going to be the end of me rambling. Uh, I don't want to make my shows too long. I'm basically going to make them maybe about half an hour of that, and it's on 24 minutes now. Uh, so just to wrap up, guys, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications um, to my YouTube channel. If you like the content, there will be more content coming. Like I said, it's education, it's market analysis, uh, ASX and crypto. I will get into the Australian uh, property market as well. Um, that won't be obviously as, as much or as frequent, maybe once a month, fortnight possibly. I'm hoping to make a video possibly every day. So every day you will see some news 
uh, market updates, uh, information on crypto ASX. It may not all be. It, it, I'll try to do ASX and crypto in one show. Um, just for this particular show, this is entirely just crypto in an introduction. But in my next show, I will or stream, I will put information regarding the ASX as well as the crypto market. So thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, my name's Dan. Now you can see my pretty face. Not so pretty. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically like, subscribe, share. Um, also make comments. Tell me what content you want to see on this particular channel. Is there anything in particular you want to know about? Uh, talk about anything. So write as many comments as you want. Tell me exactly what you want on this show. Um, so yeah, follow me on Encrypted Inc. Um, and I will help you decrypt the crypto and ASX markets as best as I can. Thanks for watching and uh, all the best. See you next time.